And even more exciting on the show today is when we get to bring in someone I know very well. Ian Steele, my old Ian Emerson Steele. College alum, is making his UCSS debut to talk about one of the Guardians' top players they drafted in the draft, Alex Clemmy out of Rhode Island. What's up, Ian? How you doing, man? Mike Lucas, great to be back on with you, man. It's been a while. I think the last time I saw you was about five or six years ago in the Tri-Cities. We got some good German food, whatever that was, wherever you took yeah, me. Did. Uh, that was a great time. That was a great time, but great to see you doing so well. And uh, you mentioned the golf tournament that was just going on, or that's about to be going on. Uh, I saw Billy Andre throughout the first pitch at the Guardians game a couple days ago. He's a Rhode Island guy as well, so he's trying to spread the word about that. So there's always a Rhode Island connection, despite it being the smallest state in the land. Uh, it's funny. You, you guys probably say that about Cleveland as well, but it always seems like there's a Rhode Island connection with everything that we do. Ian, Mike is uh, babbling about Emerson College every eight seconds here, uh, and he he makes it seem like he like he should have been the starting point guard for Kansas or Duke. The way he talks is <laughs> is he that good a player uh, or no? What what say you? I, I think well, what, first of all, Emerson basketball is kind of running the NBA right now, so watch out because Mike Lucas might be uh, signing and trading your favorite player in a few years if he wants to but one thing I know about Mike Lucas he goes down in history as maybe the only Emerson Lions basketball player to make more three-pointers than two-pointers in his career my guy really? was a straight shooter big fat that. that is big an facts. unusual stat sniper huh is, <laughs> did he have a high percentage Absolutely. or was he, just, was he a chucker you could be honest Ian I didn't play a lot so the numbers both <laughs> very low uh, no, we'll say we'll say high percentage and a chucker. You know, when he got in, you shoot your shot. That's what you got to do, and that's what Mike Lucas did on some really good teams. I remember they upset like the the number one team in Division Three Amherst back in the day. We were broadcasting the game, so Mike Lucas, yeah. big leader on those on those Emerson teams. Yeah, I I called a game at Amherst once. That gym is uh, that's a tough gym to play at. They came here that year, but yeah, it, that oh, okay. gym sucked. Yeah, that was at it was at Emerson, so we were we were underground at Piano Row, uh, okay. with two rows two rows of uh, students watching my videos thing. All right, did we lose Ian? No, he's still there. He's just him? he's driving. Yep. Uh, Ian, we did bring you on though because this week Got the him. Guardians yeah. drafted your guy Alex Clemmy in the second round, right? Out of Bishop Hendrickson High School, the six six lefty who throws. High 90s. He was committed to Vanderbilt, but said he's going to sign with the Guardians. What can you tell us about Alex Clemmy? As we get through a little connection issues. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, six, six. You got me? Sorry. About All right, we got you back in. You're good. Sorry. Sure. Yeah, Yeah. no. Uh, he's six, six. Feels like he's been six, six since his freshman, sophomore year. Uh, big, strong, left-handed pitcher. He tops out at 98. He's consistently in the mid-90s. He throws a breaking ball, uh, kind of a slider, change-up, slurve type of thing. Or, excuse me, he's working on his change-up, throws a curveball slash slider, slurve type of deal. Uh, we went to pretty much every one of his starts that we could get to at ABC6 at my station just because we knew this kid was going to go day one. He was projected early on as a potentially – a first round pick uh, fell a little bit on draft night to the end of the second round going 58 overall, but the raw stuff is clearly there with Clemmy. And he looks like, I mean, he looks like a decent sized kid. You know, we always worry with the pitchers when uh, Tristan McKenzie here, for example, had injury issues. He's really super thin. I mean, just watching that video, it looks like, you know, for a high schooler, he looks fairly put together, pretty, con uh, you know, somewhat broad, in the upper body, which is important for a pitcher. But he still probably has some room to grow there, I would think. What, what do you think of his physical makeup there, Ian? Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's put on some muscle in this past year, as high school kids do. I remember we went out to do a feature story on a team that he was playing, and then all of a sudden, this guy shows up onto the scene and is mowing guys down. Um, and at that point, he was, you know, tall, skinny, and lanky, kind of a Chris Sale type, but this past year he's put on a lot of muscle. He's been in the gym consistently, and he still does have some room to grow for sure, maybe in his bottom half 
Uh, yeah. He's, you know, got the tall, skinny legs, but uh, he's definitely put on muscle so far. And to mm. be fair, he just turned 18 years old, I think, the day after the draft. So Cleveland wow. drafted a 17-year-old kid, and he's still got a few years of, of growing in him. And by the time they're done with their sorcery, he'll be throwing 114 miles an hour. Yeah, probably. The way that Cleveland handles their pitchers. Was it always known that he was going to forego college? You know, we knew he was a Vanderbilt commit, but there are some guys who make it clear they're going to college, and there's other guys who are like, yeah, but I'm really open to going to the MLB. It wasn't a sure thing. We talked to him the day after the draft, and it seemed like he didn't make his decision at that point. He was going back and forth going to Vanderbilt. Obviously, you guys know Vanderbilt's a college baseball powerhouse. He goes there for three years and comes back out. Maybe he is the first round pick that he was once projected to go as. So it came down. It was a 24-hour, maybe 72-hour, 48-hour decision for him. And then the day after we talked to him, he announced that he was going to sign. So it wasn't a slam dunk, especially after he went late second. We were thinking, you know, is he going to go back and maybe – get his grade back up to a first round grade. Uh, But in the end, he he made the decision the other day and he's certainly signing uh, his slots around 1.4 mil. Ian, you know, Jason alluded to the Guardians elite ability, you know, along with Tampa Bay as much as anybody, their ability to draft and develop pitchers. I wonder if that factored in for him at all in his decision. I mean, they they turn all their good pitchers into better pitchers without any exceptions, really. For sure. I just heard you guys go down the list of the grades for this past, this current Cleveland Guardians team. And, you know, Bieber, a Cleveland guy, you go down the list, you know, drafted, developed, and now they're in the big leagues. And I think the relationship with Clemmy and the Guardians was there from the get-go. They interviewed him right away. He was open and honest with them about what he thinks his upside can be. And I think they aligned in, in that sense. And, and he knows that Cleveland has a track record of developing pitchers into all-stars, into big league players within their own system, and they don't give them away if they have a, a highly prized prospect in trades and things like that. So he knows that the homegrown system is something that he can use to his advantage to eventually get to the big leagues. I'm sure it played a factor. You know, you can go to one uh, baseball development system in Vanderbilt or – you can get paid and get developed at the same time. So that's what that's what uh, he's going to do. And you know, Bull laughs and jokes Ian about uh, about these dudes. We, you know, say we got we love our prospects. We just we just got to right. wait till 2036 to, to see them. Um, yeah. <laughs> which one of these guys? And this is impossible to do. Which one of these guys? If you had to stake your claim or, or your name, the name to fame on who, who, which one of these guys will we see quickest or we'll see, you know, the fastest. Is it a pitcher? Is it one of the, one of the power hitters? Who, who are we going to see in uh, Cleveland first? I think in general, you can always look at the draft board and say college bats or college arms are going to rise up quickest and Clemmy, who's, a uh, 17-year-old, now 18-year-old high school pitcher might take a little bit of time. You know, Clemmy, there's some questions about whether he's going to continue to be a starter, which he was in high school, or if he's going to end up in the bullpen and just throw gas out of there. He's consistently thrown, you know, like I said, in the mid-90s, and he taps out at around 98 on his fastball. He's got to work on his third pitch, and then he'll see where he lands on the roster once he gets to the pros. But as of now, you know, Clemmy – might take a little bit of time just so Cleveland can figure out what they want to do with them. Ian, we appreciate the time, man. We'll be keeping an eye on this kid as well as the other Guardians draft picks that they're all obsessed with. We love it. Thank you, Ian. We appreciate the time, man. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate Thank you it. guys anytime. All right. If you got any bad stories to tell about Mike, uh, save him up for a special show we're going to do where we rip him for an entire two hours. Well, <laughs> I want to know why you guys call him McNuggets because he used to call me Bacon. So now we're both delicious. Uh, <laughs> Fair. And, Why did and, you, you know, call him bacon? Uh, you know, Mike. so listen, Ian, they call me McNuggets because on literally the third, I think the third show, we had Joe Thomas on, Hall of Fame left tackle, and he called me McNuggets. Oh, yeah. 
and once Joe Thomas calls you something, it sticks. Yeah. I still don't know why I ever started calling Ian Bacon. I just did. I was like, that sounds cool. You're Bacon from now on. And I just called him Bacon. So, and no one else did besides me. It never stuck. So back in the back in the day, we used to do like a – it was called WEBN Sports. It was like our weekly sports center show. And there was a song that we put under the highlights called Iron Bacon. Oh, and yeah. I think it kind of stemmed from that. Iron Bacon – my last name is Steel. Steel Iron Bacon is what I remember you trying to th- work on that with me. So if you guys go to break and come back with Iron Bacon, you got a viewer for life. <laughs> Are you related to Justin Steele, Cubs pitcher? I am not. I am not. Not that I know but of. Wait, Maybe somewhere Ian, down the line. Do you remember but... Libby Murphy from Emerson? She's married to Justin Steele. I do. She has two kids with Justin Steele. Oh, really? That's yes. crazy. <laughs> And Justin Steele pitched That's against Cal Quantrill wild. the other day. Cal Quantrill's married to Easton Ashby, Emerson College, women's basketball player. We had an Emerson husband. Look at this. Cleveland Guardian, Chicago Cubs pitching matchup the other this day. Water. This guy's wow. amazing, amazing, bro. Good, this, good, good this work. Guy. Small school at the corner of Boylston and Tremont. You never know what you're going to get. Awesome. Ian Bacon, thank thanks you. again, man. We will, uh, we'll chat soon. Anytime, right, guys. We-